Now what we're going to do in this video, we're going to consider least squares regression in the context of classification. And this is of course a bit odd because regression really was for continuous variables and classification is for discrete variables. Now, of course I could still do this if my objective is just to find a discriminant function, right? Um, now it turns out, maybe as expected, that even though we can come up with a discriminative model using um, least squares regression, regression may not be the wisest thing to do for classification. Uh, but for sure this will get us started on discriminant functions and it gets us motivated to maybe come up with something better. Okay, so I'm going to use least squares regression for classification and I'm going to consider k classes. And now each class gets its own discriminant function. So that's really this linear function that we see over here. So it consists of this uh, weight vector, a w and a bias term. Uh, so each class k gets its own discriminant function. And we're going to use short notation here. We're going to work with matrix vector multiplications to keep it a bit, uh, the notation a bit compact uh, in the following way. So all my yk predictions are obtained at once via this matrix uh, vector uh, notation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define uh, w tilde. So this vector is basically the weight vector prepended with the bias. Uh, so we can we can all inc include everything in one uh, vector. So this will give me a vector of length m containing all my uh, model parameters. Uh, but then I also need to prepend my data vector with a one as to be able to include uh, the bias in this uh, vector. Okay, that's also of length m. And then uh, each prediction, each individual prediction is given via this uh, scalar product of my weight uh, vector w with x. That would give me a uh, one prediction. And I can obtain all prediction at once by um, putting all these uh, weight vectors next to each other. So these weight vectors form the columns of w uh, because then I can obtain the predictions at once. Right? We have a w transpose over here. So we have row vector multiplication. So one row then becomes one of such weight vectors that we multiply with all uh, the data uh, elements. And then the next row. Okay, so this gives me all these predictions. So this means that my um, vector y of x is really all these discriminant function evaluations stacked on top of each other. So this is y2 and I have k of such uh, discriminant functions. Um, yeah, so this was obtained by this matrix vector multiplication and it gives me a vector of length k, one prediction for each class. And then my strategy is going to be, I'm going to assign uh, an x to class c k if the k model gave the, the largest value in this uh, discriminant function. So that's denoted as a search. So I'm going to select the index k, so the class k by looking over all these predictive functions and just select the one that gave the, the, the largest um, value. Um, so maybe here again, maybe it could be useful to think in terms of what we saw in the previous lecture, that is um, why these discriminant functions, these Y uh, models, they return values that can be interpreted as the distance of data point X to the decision surface, right? So uh, the larger this value, the further away this point lies from the decision surface. And so maybe you could think uh, the, the more confident I am that this point lies indeed on the, the correct side of the decision surface. And in that sense, uh, well, we could do this, right? It makes sense to use this intuition to select the most uh, probable class. Okay, so that's how we're going to use these linear models for classification. Uh, but then of course we need to minimize uh, the least squared errors. Uh, so we need target values. And what kind of target values are we going to choose? For this, we're going to use one hot encodings for the classes. So that means each uh, target uh, that we're going to regress or predict is going to be uh, consists of zeros and ones. So this particular vector would encode for the third class, right? Okay, and now this is maybe where the regression problem becomes a bit odd because I'm trying to predict zeros and ones, uh, whereas my regression models really return values anywhere on the real axis, right? It could be negative, it could be very large, uh, but this is what I want to reproduce. I want my linear models 
So each of these y k's, I want them to return a value which is uh, close to zero uh, when it is not in the class and close to one when it is in the class. So that's really the, the target that I'm trying to recover. Okay, so that's how we're going to format the data. We are going to build one uh, big uh, data matrix. So uh, the data matrix, that's this thing over here, where we're going to stack all these um, uh, data vectors on top of each other. And we're going to consider a target matrix, uh, which encodes for all the predictions that we uh, try to make. And this target matrix is then N by K, right? For each data point of which I have N, I have K, um, classes that I want to predict or K of these zeros and ones that I essentially want to predict. Okay, now then we can define a least squares uh, regression error function, which really tries to minimize the squared error for each of these uh, components. And we can uh, conveniently uh, encode that in the following form. So this is only matrix vector multiplications. And then in the end, I take the trace and the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements. So let's take a closer look at, at what we're uh, looking at here. So uh, these terms, uh, so this is really an N by K matrix uh, because this thing gave me a prediction for each uh, data point N and uh, then I had K of these uh, predictions, right? And these were my targets. So what I'm looking at here, so that's X tilde W tilde minus T and then let's look at the k prediction that is given by the sum over my weights of data point n and then component m with weight m and then uh, for the classifier or the, the discriminant function number k and then for each data point I have a target for each n data point I have k of these targets so that's one of these numbers okay so this is really um, what you see over here is really the error uh, for each of these uh, data points for each class uh, K. Okay, and we're interested in the squared error. Um, so, well, we take the square of this thing and we're going to encode it again via this matrix vector multiplication. So this was also a matrix of M by K, uh, though there's a transpose. So this is actually, this is of size K by N. So you see that this matrix matrix multiplication gives me a matrix of size K by K, where um, essentially we multiply these terms for each uh, combination of a K and a J on the left side. And that gives me a K of these uh, K by K <laughs> products. And so we're only interested in the square of this thing itself. So we're interested in the diagonal of this matrix. And that's why we take uh, the trace. Okay, so let's write this out. I have a half times the trace, which was the sum over my uh, diagonal elements. And this uh, matrix, matrix multiplication sums over my data points, right? So I sum over n is one to n. And then um, I really take the product of uh, the things inside here. And here we also had a sum we summed over um, the the k, uh, sorry, the, the m uh, basis function. So uh, this is going to be a sum from m is one to m of my data with my model parameters for each class k minus t and k squared. Okay, now I can imagine that this maybe looks a bit intimidating with all these indices and all these summations, but what we essentially showed here is that we can compute the sum of squared errors using this matrix matrix multiplication and taking the trace. So in the end, what we did, we really took the sum over all squared errors for each prediction. So for each K, I have a prediction and I have an error. And also for each data point, I have this uh, error. So I have N by K for each data point, each class, I have an error and a squared error, and I'm going to sum over all these errors. And that gives me the total sum of squared errors. Okay, now, and then our strategy is to minimize this thing, right? So we want to minimize the sum of squared errors as a function of W. So we're going to follow the same recipe as always. We're going to take the derivative of this error function with respect to W and set it to zero. 
Okay, so we're computing here the derivative with respect to a matrix. That's something that we've done before in the, the covariance matrix case, uh, for example. Um, we can do this again now for this uh, least squared uh, error function. So we take the derivative, we set it to zero, and then solve it. And that gives us the solution, the least squared solution for my weights uh, W. And this looks very similar to what we've seen before in the least squared regression case. Though in the least squared regression case, so far we only considered prediction for one uh, value, and this is essentially the multivariate regression case. Uh, the form is essentially the same, where we take this pseudo inverse of my uh, data matrix X and multiply it with my uh, targets, and that gives us uh, the weight matrix uh, W. Okay, and this then provides me with my uh, discriminant function, so my least squares uh, discriminant function is given by this weight matrix, uh, the least squares solution W, transpose X. Okay, so that's really the nice thing about least squares regression for classification is that we have these closed form uh, solutions, right? So uh, we format uh, the data in one big data matrix, we make this target matrix of uh, zero and one predictions that we want to make, and then we can in one go uh, analytically obtain my, um, well, the optimal weights, and that defines my discriminant function. So in that sense, it's easy enough, and let's see if it actually works. Okay, sure it works in, in quite some uh, applications, uh, but there are some serious uh, problems associated with least squares uh, for classification, which I'm going to consider now. Uh, but maybe first of all, this is a nice example where it works. So we have these two uh, data sets, or uh, two classes, which are nicely linearly separable, and we obtain with the least squares regression case, uh, these nice decision boundaries. But then we have this problem that these decision boundaries are very sensitive to outliers. And that's visualized in the second image. So suppose I have these data points, uh, which can be considered outliers because they are not close to the majority group. Um, though they are still clearly on one side of, let's say, an optimal decision boundary, right? Now, what the least squares regression problem is going to do, uh, remember that we wanted to predict uh, labels uh, targets one for each of these uh, data points. And that's going to be tricky now because uh, remember that the interpretation of these Y case was also the distance to the decision boundary, right? So that really means we want to have each point the same distance one to the decision boundary in the end. And well, that's clearly not possible. And then you get these distorted uh, decision boundaries in the end and we want to skew this a bit such that these points become closer to my uh, decision boundary. Okay, so that's the mechanism involved here. So this distance, we saw that in the previous video, uh, is given by y of x over the norm of w. So really uh, the distance of these points to the decision boundary. Uh, but uh, what we did in the regression problem, we said um, we aim for y of x is one uh, because uh, the targets uh, where one, for example, in this case. And this means that in the end, we try to get each data point uh, at, at distance one to this uh, decision boundary. Okay, so clearly this isn't a nice thing. Uh, in a way, it says that if my points are too easily uh, classified, so they're too far on this side of the decision boundary, I'm going to penalize them for just being too easy uh, to classify. And uh, this is, of course, uh, not nice. And there's solutions to this. Um, that will be in one of the next videos. We'll talk about logistic regression, where we actually have a penalty that basically says, okay, the further you're away from this point, that's fine. But I'm going to focus primarily on uh, the points close to the decision boundaries. And there's, there's actually several uh, classifiers coming up that, that focus on this aspect. Okay, so that indicates a clear problem with uh, least squares regression. Now there's another uh, issue, and that's for, if we consider more than K classes, uh, then there are some regions that become very small or can even be uh, completely ignored. And that's visualized in this figure on the right over here. This is an example where we have like uh, three classes and one of the classes is right uh, between uh, the other two. What you then often see is that this middle class gets dominated by uh, the neighboring two classes. And so the middle class, according to the models that we just obtained, uh, almost disappears and this effect is called masking. So this problem is called masking.
And it happens quite often in, uh, well, when we use this regression case for a classification for multi, multi-class classification. And then finally, this, we consider this also an issue, uh, the Ys are not real probabilities. And we like to work with probabilities because that gives us a sense of uncertainty and, and some nice uh, properties. And in our regression case, these Ys aren't probabilities, right? Because they can take on values on anywhere on the real line, so they can be negative. So uh, they could be negative, but they could also take on very large values, larger than one. And the closest thing that uh, my predictions can come to probabilities is that we have, uh, if we use this one hot encoding, such that the sum of the targets uh, over all classes equals to one, then we can actually show, and this is actually a nice result, is that also the sum of my predictions will uh, sum to one. Uh, so in that sense, it has some similarity to uh, probabilities, but of course these Y case uh, can be negative. Okay, so that sums it up for a least squares for classification. Uh, it's a simple algorithm for which we have closed form solutions, but there are some problems associated with it. Um, now in the next video, I'm going to consider a different uh, type of discriminant function for classification.